It's time now to start off the festival with our first session, Essential Art, Essential Poetry, Journey of an Artist. We of course have Mr. Jatin Das. Can I also request Mr. Rohintan Daruwala to come up on stage? And also Nazia Izutin, the, our moderator for the session. Just a brief words about Nazia for those uh, who don't know her. She's the founding president of the World Integrity Center and the founding director of the World Integrity Foundation. Nazi also spearheaded the initiative to establish the World Integrity Center in Dehradun, the state capital of Uttarakhand. She is also a member of the International Fellowship of Reconciliation and Women Peacemakers Program in the Netherlands and the People's Council for Social Justice in India. She is a lawyer by profession and was in corporate law practice at the Milkbank Tweed, Hadley and McCloy in New York and DLA Piper in London and Dubai. She is also a Fulbright Scholar at the Washington College, Maryland, where she majored in American Studies. She was awarded the Canada World Youth Scholarship to study sustainable development. She obtained a Master's of Law from Harvard University, where she was awarded an Islamic Legal Studies grant and a Human Rights Programs grant. She obtained a Bachelor's in Law from Aligarh Muslim University, where she was a university valedictorian. And of course, there's much more, but I'll stop it there. Nazia, over to you. <laughs> Thank you, Rishi, and thank you for stopping also. So when uh, Jatin and I are meeting after a very long time and uh, I was remembering that Jatin has a lot to do with how WIC has evolved and how WIC started. We call him one of the foundation stones of WIC India because he was the first speaker um, at WIC's outreach programs in 2012. So that was our first public session. He was the first speaker and we're really, really happy to have him back. But more than anything, he's one of my closest friends, and um, it's wonderful for me to share this platform with him and talk to him about his journey as an artist, his journey as a, as a poet, which most people don't know about, because that's also why we have this session called Essential Art, Essential Poetry, and tying the thread between art and poetry, and the intimacy between art and poetry. Rohintan is a poet, we're going to talk today about his collection, The Sand Libraries of Timbuktu, um, and his style of writing, his connection with poetry again. But I think the common thread for me um, when I talk about essential art, essential poetry, is why does it become essential? I expression, art, why does it become essential? So I, I would like to begin with a question to Jatin and then follow up that question to, with, to Rohintan. Um, Jatin, you also in your speech and uh, in your note, uh, you say that being the middle son from a middle class family, I was neglected, the black sheep. Uh, the sentence that intrigues me is where you say, my freedom comes from being ignored and reprimanded. I had my way to do things, drawing and painting, working in the garden, swimming in the river. So when you say that, uh, that your freedom came from being ignored and reprimanded, I want to know more from you. What do you mean? And I also want to know, did art then become an essential part of your freedom? Did expression then become an essential part of your freedom? You see, today, the way we talk about art, um, art in galleries, dance and music in auditoriums and proscenium, um, in our country, art was a way of life, uh, in your living. So, um, uh, you see, quite often people ask me, uh, the media people, that when did you decide to become an artist? And I don't know how to answer it, because I never decided to become an artist. I, I was drawing and painting and I continued, as simple as that. You see, uh, 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 I'm not very self-indulgent. I, I, you know, the painting that I've done in my life, I've never looked back, I've never looked at my work. Until somebody comes to see my work, I take it out to show it, then I say, oh my God, when did I do this? Anyway, having said that, when you come from a middle-class Indian family, then my elder sister used to have prayers in the evening, or there was arati. And so, you know, and there was a lovely fragrance of the ghee burning, you know, this. And at, in some um, festivals, the figurines which are made of bronze came out and polished and you saw the sculptures. 
uh, and so on. And I remember my grandmother saying, don't pluck the flower unless you put it, uh, uh, the flower vase or the oven puts it on the hair or offer it to the deity and so on. When you've grown up uh, with a five acre of land with vegetation and fish and banana grove and everything, so you knew about uh, uh, how the plants grow and so on. Um, so, uh, drawing and painting, doing little clay modeling, looking after plants. Uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, we uh, brag a, uh, a lot about uh, being an artist. You know, that traditional artists are real artists. We are phony. The contemporary artists are phony. You know, because they carry a banner that I'm an artist. And look at me. My mother wrote poems almost every day and shoved it under the mattress. And when she died at 85, my sister put them together to bring out a book of poems. Are you getting what I'm saying? So what I said earlier, that if you paint and draw, it's not necessary to exhibit. If you write a poem, I've written a poem, a poem doesn't need a reader, you know, and so on. So it has to be the way of life. And everybody in our country, the Malayali gentleman who is in the ISRO, or that thing's going up, rocket, a rocket, and yeah. he's a Kathakali dancer. Yeah. There were great, there are great scientists and poets and doc, no, doctors, engineers, there were writers, there were poets, they used to paint, as I talked about, uh, uh, Dr. Baba. So they were holistic people. So this concept of uh, 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 art and artists, like museums in our country. Museums were done by the British. Eh? And you know, they are known as Sangrahala in Hindi. In Bengali, it's called Jadughar. It's terrible, you know. So, but it was very good that they collected some of the works. But the whole concept of museum has to be different today. That it should be a center where the children should go and see. There should be, an, if you see stone sculpture, there should be a stone carver which should be working there. What I'm saying, this is a great country. It has gone to the dogs. We have to search for our identity. And uh, art is a way of life. Uh, thank you. So, Rohan, then I, I have the same question to you. Um, I don't know a lot about your childhood, so if you could share a little bit about how your journey as a poet and I want to repeat that question where people ask you know when did you decide to become a <laughs> it's a funny question and, and, and yeah. it doesn't exist yeah. <laughs> but when did poetry become essential to you yeah um, I guess there's never really an answer to that question because um, uh, I guess you can kind of uh, answer by inverting the question it's like um, uh, pretty much every child is an artist you, you, f you find it hard, you'll be find it hard to find a child who's, who doesn't like to draw or compose, if you can use such a big word, or, um, or write stuff. And uh, I guess in a sense, um, you don't become an artist. I guess artists are people who manage to still stay artists when they become adults. I guess in my case, um, also sometimes uh, there are also people who manage to uh, remember that they are. So, um, for me, I, I've, I've been writing poetry since I was a kid, but it's been off and on. So, I, ha I have periods when I do write and then I'll, I'll have periods when I don't. So, um, last couple of years, I have been writing more than before, which is great. Um, any, any kind of work you do, any kind of art is never uh, divorced from your life, from the life you lead. So, um, it's, and I think uh, it's... We, people can be under the pressure to always, uh, especially with the marketplace, to keep producing uh, and to feel that they're not uh, doing enough if they're not producing. But uh, um, I guess in reality, you, your, your life and your work uh, goes through periods, uh, ups and up, not necessarily ups and downs, but maybe uh, uh, crests and troughs where you have crests where you're more productive and troughs where you're you can say maybe recharging or uh, recollecting, ex collecting experiences, right? And um, I guess, at least for me, um, 
a lot of the stuff happens uh, below the surface in in your in my subconscious mind i think it does for a lot of people and uh, the thing with the subconscious mind is it's uh, uh, a beast you can't control and which you probably as an artist don't want to control so much because uh, uh, we all study technique we try and hone our technique but uh, uh, very often the stuff that really matters that Uh, really connects to people is something that uh, um comes from inside comes from the subconscious in somewhere which you can't actually say where it comes from yeah so when did i uh, decide to become or when did i realize i was um uh, a poet or an artist well i guess it's always been part of my identity uh, it it becomes a stronger part of your identity when you get feedback when people are reading your stuff and some of them like it Uh, and it's it's been a gradual process for me when did you write first you know when when did you start so we all have these thoughts like you said going on in the back of our heads and we're all poets and artists but most people don't bring it out um, um on paper or on a canvas um, when did you bring it out what pushed you to bring it out uh, to express um. it beyond to just yourself um i am mean beyond to just myself and maybe beyond uh, friends and family um i guess one thing was i uh, there was a uh, a poem writing contest so i entered that and uh, that was a spurt start writing with poems and connecting with other people who wrote i guess sometimes it's an event and sometimes it's just uh, it's a sort of build up where you you've been writing and uh, I I guess uh, for anybody who's doing any kind of creative endeavor there's always a uh, um, an initial period where what you're producing is uh not necessarily where you want it to be and uh, it can take some amount of time it varies obviously uh, from person to person uh, it it gets to at least a point where you're at least uh, a little happy with it and okay. <laughs> you're not embarrassed to show it to somebody and uh, once you kind of cross uh, that barrier then uh, uh, then if you're lucky things start uh, start building up um, um i think like uh, very much like jatin said it's it's very important for an artist uh, to be able to isolate him or herself uh, to be able to produce creatively and uh, uh, not be drawn in by the marketplace or even uh, uh, the more negative parts of your own ego mm. uh, but uh, um also because uh, often a creative endeavor can can sometimes be a lonely business um it's it's also helpful to have uh, uh, to be able to resonate with someone once in a while and to have that kind of uh, uh, feedback or feeling occasionally that helps you that uh, does help you to keep going Thank you. Thank you, Runtan. I I'm going to follow that question of uh, Jatin. So you said that to remain as an artist without compromise, it is necessary to maintain a distance from name and fame. Um so would you have been a secret? Would you have It's not just it's not yet? just name and fame. Um you know when we travel in the train or the aircraft or when when you meet too many people too many images too many words too many thoughts piling in you dilip chitra the famous poet and a critic uh who lived in bombay and then later in pune was a very close friend of mine part of our group he said jatin our pages of our book were blank before now they are all filled in there is no space any more left fantastic you know dilip chitra was a stall what as a great critic and a great poet you know who died a few years ago and um uh, you see uh, you know what is very sad that teaching uh, at home and primary school i think the country at the moment in a terrible situation the only two institution left as home and school I have been to thousands of school college university in India and abroad and it's very sad when I go to a school and uh, then they take me to something you know ribbon cutting give a lecture I say I don't uh, I don't be chief guest anywhere at all 
I don't write preface to anybody's catalog. But when I go, I said, where are your paintings? Your, the, your walls in your school uh, are hungry. So, but we have art in our art classroom. Are you getting what I'm saying? The art should spill over to the school walls. The, uh, if you were, there are a lot of artists, they, they live like uh, Alu Bechnevala, you know. Mm. So, uh, you know, you have to live as an artist. And uh, I'm not saying artistic or arty living. Don't uh, mm. misunderstand me. Live like an artist in that sense. You look after your plants, your friends. You, you go 10 kilometers to see a friend. Or look after your dog, your plants, your, you know, everything. When you do a painting, you look after your painting. When you do a cooking, the painting is not important and so on, you know. When you write a poem, it's not painting. You write a poem. Quite often people think if you're writing as a painter, if you write a poem, you must be only talking about painting, mm. you know, and so on. So we have some narrow, narrow vision and ideas, some uh, 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 ideas that we throw on other, others, you know. So, uh, you know, if you see little children, they paint beautifully, mm. okay? As they grow up, You'll see the painting and drawing is changing. They want a ruler, they want eraser and all that. Huh? There's something seriously wrong. In our country, we don't realize that art and science are inseparable. The great, you know, C.V. Raman was a great scientist, as you know, the Nobel laureate. His son, Rad Radhakrishnan, was a great scientist. He was the director of the Raman Institute, was a close friend of mine. He used to cook fantastic food. He was a lover of painting and music and life as such. And at the art center that I'm building in Bhubaneswar, he came and gave a lecture on uh, the inseparable relationship between art and science. You know? And he's a man who went around the world two, three times on a sailing boat with that scientist at 85. Oh, this city thing. Ah. So, you get my point. So, we don't live life. We, uh, you know, uh, uh, the poetry and painting should ooze out of your uh, uh, nose and ears in living, you know. So we don't have that. And, and sorry, what was it? I forgot. Sorry, I went to. I'm, I have too much of rambling. Uh, we were talking about distance from name and fame. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, you know, it's not a name and fame. Uh, you know, there are artists. Picasso uh, started signing in big letters on his painting. So did Hussein. And then Souza started, right? A big signature of Souza. He was a great artist, great artist. But you know, we quite often people ask, you know, when you go to Europe, Acha, are you influenced by Picasso? I said, who is Picasso? He said, don't you know Picasso? I said, of course, a great artist. I said, why should I be influenced by Picasso? This country has extraordinary sculptures and paintings and miniature. Why should I be? Picasso was not so great as Da Vinci, you know what I mean? So we have, you know, you know why? Because the interior designers put Picasso, Matisse, uh, uh, Van Gogh in your uh, 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 library and all our art teachers told us to refer to these artists. You know, we are a lost race, you know. If you want to be a poet, you should think of Kalidas as a role model, na? So why should I think of Picasso as a role model, ne? So likewise, uh, it's, no, when I'm talking about distancing, you have to distance yourself from your own work also. You know, any one of us, it's not for an artist, nothing great. All of us, uh, do we live our life? Do we take a little walk and see what are the new blossom? I was giving a lecture once uh, to all these corporate people. So I said, when you drive down to your office, what do you think? I'm thinking of my work. I said, haven't you seen in summer fantastic Amal Taj and the Delhi roads? Beautiful, you don't you see that? So, one has to be vulnerable. Everybody in the Western education and the paradigm is telling you to be confident. What a vulgar thing! You should be vulnerable. So, keep your windows open, let there be fresh air, and sometimes when there are foul air, you shut it. You know what I mean? There already there are uh, contamination by travel, by meeting, by art and fart and many things, you know. There are a lot of contamination coming. So, uh, there are, uh, you know, the market is full of it. So, one has to save one's soul. Thank you.
Jatin, when you say that, you know, I am very tempted to read one of uh, Rohinton's poems. Uh, when you say contemplate, think about smaller things, reflections, and being in the moment entirely. So this is really sweet poem, uh, Rohinton, making tea. And um, I, I want you to tell us more about it after, if you, may, if you will allow me to read it out. Uh, so this poem is making tea. Boil the water, she says. Boil the water till it's warmer than common lust, but cooler than hot temper. Pour the water. Let it sit longer than an impatient child's pleading, but not as long as brooding jealousy. Pour it out into cups. Add sugar sweeter than kindness, but not as saccharine as indulgence. Stir after you add milk, enough for the color of compassion, but not for the shade of weakness. Serve it with courtesy that falls short of servitude and sip it slowly with gratitude. I think it's a beautiful poem. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you for the lovely reading. Um, yeah, uh, so I love chai. And um, <laughs> I, I think you'll see that from the book. Uh, um, yeah, I have a, I write an uh, unhealthy number of uh, poems on food and chai and coffee. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I, I think uh, uh, chai is always a great way to start, whether you're starting your day or you're starting a poetry collection or, uh, or anything else. It's a shared ceremony. Um, not necessarily, I'm not talking about necessarily, uh, not necessarily a formal Japanese uh, tea ceremony, but even uh, a ceremony between friends, uh, uh, meeting at the crack of dawn uh, for the cutting or something like that. And uh, so it becomes, uh, and I think for many people, uh, uh, whether it's a formal English tea time or just a short chai break between colleagues, it's... Uh, it's 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 probably the um, one of the most important lubricants for conversation I think we have in our country, uh, chai. Um, so I, I think the section I put is tea, coffee, and cigarettes. So I've tried to include uh, both religious factions, uh, tea and coffee. Um, although I, I I do tend more towards tea, and um, it's. Uh, so yeah. when I when I think about the poem, you know, the reflections of uh, to acts acts in life related to virtues. So each each moment of making tea, you've linked it to a virtue. Yeah, you know, kindness um, and gratitude and um, like you don't want your tea too dark, so you don't want that much of uh, that much color that it becomes your weakness. But yeah, enough color to show compassion. So I love the the way you link it to virtues in life. So how did, how, what, where did this idea come from, your morning tea? And then common lust is something I wanted you to elaborate a little bit yeah. more. <laughs> so, uh, I think what I was trying to talk about was um, about balance. And um, it's, uh, uh, that's, that's where maybe you'll find even uh, um, uh, when a samurai warrior is trained not just uh, on how to use a sword and a bow, uh, but also how to make tea and also how to arrange flowers um, because uh, I guess the most important thing always is balance uh, when you're writing a poem or when you're trying to live your life it's um, uh, it's important uh, uh, not to give in of course to the uh, baser vices uh, but it's also important not to exclude them altogether uh, because uh, I think some of the most damage to the world has been done by people who uh, were supposedly com completely virtuous or maybe thought they were. Right. So, mm -hmm. right. And, uh, uh, I see, uh, I, I draw parallels to Rudyard Kipling's poem, If, yeah. you know, where he, he writes about virtues and the uh, and balance. The, the whole poem, If, is about balance. I don't know if you've read the poem. Yeah, and, but, yeah, and yeah. if you can... Um, but Walk with kings and keep the common touch. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. yes. So the simplicity of morning tea and uh, explaining balance to the world, I think it's, I think it's beautiful. But when you talk about food, you know, I want to bring that back to Jatin. 
Some of the best meals I've had in Dehradun are in Jatin's home. And uh, Jatin's a fabulous cook. He makes the most amazing fish curry and the most amazing bengen. Uh, if you're lucky enough for, ever, uh, for him to invite your home, then, you know, um, I'm so glad that I can, I can go to Jatin's home and eat. And I, you know, there's a common theme here in, in art and poetry and food. And a lot of Rohintan's poems, there, there are sections on fruit. And you've written a lot about fruit. Fruit is a recurring theme in your poetry. And you have a poem called Mango Fudge. And one day when Jatin and I were talking, he talked to me about his mango workshop. You remember your mango workshop, Jatin? Yeah. I was hoping you could tell us a little bit more about mango workshop and how, how you repeatedly use the term holistic. So I think the mango workshop and morning tea is a poem and mango fudge is a poem. These are all examples of holistic life, you know, holistic living, that how a mango is such an important part of one's being and one's life and one's lifestyle and one's essence. So will you tell me, will you tell us a little bit more about the mango workshop, Jatin? That I have forgotten. <laughs> but uh, first of all, cooking is greatest form of art amongst all art forms. Let's first understand this. 99% of my friends all over the world, painter, writer, musician, architect, dancer, they're all very good cooks and very fond of eating. <laughs> this is one. So, cooking is very important, not as a humor I'm saying it. You can smell, you can touch, you can feel, you can, with your finger, you, you can hear the tarka and all that. So, all your five sensory organs are engaged. Okay. When I was a student in Bombay at the JJ School of Art, my YMCA hostel was in Leamington Road and to save money from the bus, I used to sketch and walk the distance of our eight kilometers. So, then I used to stop at Opera House where Bade Gulam Ali Khan Sahib had his studio. So, I would sit down and listen to him, then go to my hostel. Although I know nothing about music, but I've listened to music of great musicians all along my life. So, very good Amelie Khansa will say, Baba, kya sugan dhara hai, kya pakra hai. Eh? So, all he kriyas karte hai. Thoda baigan bhi fry kar dena. I believe my point. Achha, all the great classical musicians of our country, everybody are very fond of you. Uh, Riyas or Sona, or Dosti, or Prashrab, Vitapan, Living Khana. Okay, this one. When I go to Europe, all my friends in turn will cook. They will have a little bit of wine they make at home, will be kept until I go, they will not open it. So everybody will cook in turn. This is one. Okay. These are all different ep episodes, and, you know. So, uh, there was a time, I've gone to IMA market, Let's not talk about poetry and art, etc. This is more important. So, we uh, go to Ayana Market and see lovely vegetables, lovely mushroom, lettuce, and all that. So, while I'm buying, they say, hey, it would be a good idea to cook a meal today. Because I'm a very indulgent person. As a matter of fact, I'm over indulgent about everything. So, I buy, and then on the way back, when I come in the car, I telephone to three of my friends, come, I'm going to cook a meal today. And everybody is to come, and I will not name them. They are very important people in the city. Uh, I don't mean important as politicians, etc. But, uh, you know, so they would come for a drop of fat. And then, once I go, and things have changed in our life, in the whole country. So once I told them, come to a meal tomorrow, this is Jatin, why didn't you tell, tell us before? I said, no more cooking at all. So sometimes I haven't cooked for two years. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? The cooking is a very, very important. This is one. So the third, fourth episode. The other is my eldest son is to study in Rishi Valley School. So I went and I did a lot of things for the very uh, thing. Then I said, I'll cook a meal one day. So I said, but I want 10 teachers and 10 students. The kitchen has to be cleaned up and you go and you make sprouts. It's a vegetarian school. So when I cooked a meal, I made about 10 varieties of salads and vegetables, this and that. So when I came, my son writes to me, Baba, they all know you as a cook, not as an artist. 
You get what I mean? So, a lot of people, do you know when I was 24 years old, I had dinner with J.R.D. Tata, Hulk Larson, there's to be an Air Force chief who died of a bone, fish bone in the throat, whatever, Banerjee or Chatterjee. And I was, uh, all of them were cooking and I used to cook fish, you know. Achha, incidentally, I've not learned cooking at all. And everybody learns from books, etc. But I on a palate, because my grandmother, mother, sister and sister-in-law were great cooks. So it's all there, you know what I mean? So cooking is more important than painting. <laughs> that reminds me of a word from your note again, Jatin. You know, you write that I went to Bombay to study at the Sir JJ School of Art at the age of 17. I, traveling alone from Mayurbanj to Bombay, the Bay of Bengal to the Arabian Sea, then the Junoon started and there was no time to breathe and just work, work and work. So what is this Junoon? Junoon hai. Kya Junoon tha? What started? And you know, what all of us, all of us are born with special things. You know, God is very naughty. He doesn't give everything to everybody. <laughs> you know? So each one of us, you have to scratch yourself. Uh, you know, I wonder how many people don't sleep at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock for tomorrow. Why don't you dream? Why not look through the window to the setting moon or whatever? And I'm sure each one of you are poets and painters and writers. Um, uh, I'll come to that. Uh, once I did a workshop 40 years ago at Max Muller Bhavan. I told you I'm an indulgent person. <laughs> so the director was very... Uh, uh, Dr. Heinz Mode. So. Uh, I said, okay, but with one condition, I need 10 baskets of mango. Raw mango, sucking mango, scooping mango, orange, yellow, green, all mango. But the parents and teachers have to come with the children. Okay? And then I had some a singer who sang kajri and all that, because mango season. And there was a mango tree we sat there. So I wanted everybody to have mango. The raw mango with salt, scooping, sucking, mango, etc., etc. Then they drawn the mango tree and the uh, nest on the top of the mango tree. And about two years ago, there was a tall sadaji huh, with a little sadaji comes to me on the roadside and touches my feet, the older sadaji. I said, Kya hua? He said, Sir, you did that mango project in Maxwell of Havan. I was the child. I still remember the mango. You get my point. So coming to Junoon, all of us, you know, we are living a middle path. You know, gadi chahiye, bada bada telephone chahiye, a 20-year-old girl earning 5,000 rupees, but I have a 20,000 rupees mobile phone, you know, or a gadi, a microwave, which is very dangerous for food and your hand. But you know, we, we have just caught in this, uh, you know. So uh, the Junoon. So all of us have a little bit of junoon in us. If you, if you like a dog, sniff and follow, then it shows you the path. No? So and all of us have it. You know, uh, and then you can be a rasika. Like I know nothing about music. I'm not born with, I can't sing for nuts. Eh? Uh, but I have a listening ear, what they call karna suddhi. I can, I can say if somebody is besura, because from my childhood I've been listening to music. But somebody else is very good in mathematics or poetry or painting or whatever, you know. Uh, but I also write poems much before you're born. <laughs> yeah. But I've been writing and, you know, uh, keeping them. We had a poetry group in Bombay, the Samovar, which is gone, uh, in, uh, in Jahangir Art Gallery. And all the, if I tell you the names, Nisim Ezekiel, uh, Adil Jasabala, Arvind Krishan Mehrotra, uh, Arun Kolarkar, uh, maybe all of you know, but they are gone, many of them are dead and gone. But they were stalwarts in English poetry and all that. And we were a group, there were no press, there were no outsiders. Arpartha Sarathi, who is in Saratoga University, the dean of the uh, faculty. And we uh, uh, circulated the poems and read each other's poems. That's it, you know. So, uh, the Juno. 
<laughs> so all of us have that fire, and if you keep it, uh, you know, burning. Thank you. So Rohinton, do you have a love affair going with fruits? Because you write about fruit, and fruit is a recurring theme in your poetry. Um, and so the poem Mango Fudge, and then uh, you have seduction, uh, seduction by fruit. So that why fruit? What is what is your connection with fruit? Do you like fruit as a child, or oh, yeah. do you like <laughs> to eat fruit? Or uh, yeah, I, I love <laughs> fruit as a child. I still do. Um, and it's uh, yeah, I mean it's it's the most uh, you can go there. It's the most natural food. It's um, it's one of the few things you can take without actually uh, ripping into the earth uh, to grow stuff, right? Because fruits grow naturally. But of course, that's not the reason uh, I like fruits. Uh, it's just fruits are, um, they have been and they still are a very uh, good metaphor for for, every, for lots of things, for, uh, for freshness, uh, for sexuality, um, uh, for love, for beginnings, right? And uh, uh, even for timing. Um, we talk about the ripeness of fruit and um, mm. and and the bitterness of fruit. So I, I think uh, probably from the earliest and um, uh, probably because uh, fruits most often are eaten in as fruits in their natural state. Uh, probably the fruit metaphors uh, translate a little better um, across people and countries and time. Um, like um, 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 I've heard a very uh, telling metaphor from a poet about uh, a pot of steamed rice, right? uh, but that may not translate for everyone. Right? Um, okay. uh, but a mango, right? Um, uh, I think at least one of the go good things about globalization is that I doubt uh, there aren't too many places where nobody's ever seen or smelt or tasted a mango, and um, when you use that in a line, it uh, it translates immediately, and uh, it it creates a, a strong connection. Um, and uh, uh, because we connect with uh, with food, um, with all our senses, right? and uh, most importantly, probably with smell, which is our earliest uh, uh, sense, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. And um, using a food metaphor is often. Uh, a very good shortcut to get somebody to connect with something and, and it works more often than not and um, uh, because people are always uh, trying food they're always recreating it they're always interacting with it it's it's uh, it's always it's also always a rich uh, bed for new metaphors uh, it never gets old and um, yeah and it, it and uh, that connection is one of the main things so I like to use fruit and food generally as a metaphor or even a subject. But I, I do see a lot of sensitivity in, in the way you approach, because uh, fruit can be as banal as, you know, it can be as banal as fruit or it can be as interesting as fruit. So the yeah. sensitivity that, uh, that, you, that the two of you as people have or possess or own in your being is what comes out um, in your writing, in your art, in your poetry, in your expression. Um, I want to ask this question also because there's a, there are a lot of students here, so to address it to them as well. Uh, do you think that we're lacking sensitivity increasingly now in our way of life? Um, is sensitivity going away in our appreciation of life, love, people, relationships, food, everything, everything in our entire scheme of uh, life, in our entire scheme of being alive? Um, I guess you can, you can, there are always, uh, uh, there's so many reasons, you can always stack up reasons for either answer, yes or no. Uh, but maybe I'll say no. Um, uh, it's, it's always, uh, I think, um, I think it's a question that comes up in any age, that people uh, say people are not necessarily that they're not sensitive as they used to be but uh, and I think one of the most common images used for that is people traveling on a train or a bus and looking into their cell phones uh, but a little while back I uh, I saw a, a pretty old pitch I think of uh, New York subway in 1950s uh, where obviously there were no cell phones 
but everybody on the train was peering into their newspapers so it's it's not as if um, i mean technology can be to blame but it's all it's also not always the problem and uh, we are living in an age where uh, technology also enables us to connect instantly um, it's like uh, um, not only anywhere on the planet you can also uh, astronauts on the international space station can uh, talk to their families in real time um, so we become a very uh, connected species now this raises its own problems because um, uh when you connect people's brains not all the stuff in those brains is good stuff <laughs> that that can cause a lot of conflict and a lot of fear and um, i guess it's things are still in the balance about how uh, whether what will win out uh, the connectedness or the fear but uh, it's i think it's still a good thing chat how would you respond to that sensitivity and uh, now coming back to the mobile phone <laughs> uh, every vegetable vendor also you uh, you the mobile uh, uh, connected everybody eh all my friends in england many of them don't use mobile phone i'm a member of the chelsea arts club and there's a telephone crushed at the gate once a indian lady came to see me and she was using the phone inside the club which is not allowed a elderly lady got up from a table and said you must be a friend of jatin and if you don't switch off the phone he will lose his membership <laughs> okay this is one the other is many of my friends abroad they don't have their land number also registered in the book we we exhibit our underwear in public also because we learn from cinema stars and model you know so we uh, i don't know and um, i suppose i give up my mobile number to you and then you given it to your driver or my mobile number appearing on my address so somebody has typed it into this uh, i'm buying a little camera in Bal um, sorry bangalore and he by mistake i gave him the number it's available all over the country we have no sense of and i was telling you that i had gone to the washroom a lady had come to interview me and my daughter and everybody's number on the board she was photographing that we have no concept of privacy and mutual respect i think these westerners those who are manufacturing this they are laughing at us these people have inferiority complex they like microwave and mobile and computer so you no know, asians did very well in america and europe because they were very intuitive the next generation of indians will not do very well because they will say 2 plus 2 to a calculator but they can you you know our i have nothing against fantastic uh, uh, scientific development but the children learning mobile and you see the lot of people who are sending sms when they meet they have nothing to say because they've said everything every 2 minutes to each other i mean i also have a shit mobile of 2 rupees wala eh hey. but you know it's fantastically helpful but a lot of people say are you not in the facebook you don't have care whatsapp is a kuch mere paas nahi hai so how will you survive how will you become famous you know there everybody is in a hurry everybody is so anxious you know so what was the thing he was already i forgot sensitivity sensitivity <laughs> yeah yeah sab ka sensitivity hai bhai apna kaam kare and then let's so you no know, nobody is right a friend of mine's birthday she received she received about 2000 emails and i wrote her a letter she said yours was the only letter i received it's so pathetic the previous british high commissioner said other than arrival and departure of email etc he writes a letter to his friends nobody is writing a letter when you are writing a letter it's also drawing you know so it's it's like a poem anybody who's typing a poem i i pity them mm -hmm. if you write a dom morais is to write his poems then his one finger typing on a olivetti you know writing a poem is something fantastic you can do your punctuation and your you know spacing thank it's you like an affair <laughs> 
yeah. <laughs> writing out the, the whole process is like an affair. It's like being in yeah. love and yeah. So uh, it, there's a poem of yours, Rintin, that uh, I really like, which is your name. Uh, would you like to read it out? Uh, Um, I won't preface this much. It's um, it's called your name, so you can tell it's it's about uh, names and the power of names, and um, but maybe something more intimate. So let me read, just read it out. Your name. It comes to me with a soft shock of pleasure, finding your name in print or in speech. Surely your name does not embody you. You cannot be spelled out in a few letters. Yet, there are times, interrupted in thought, your name tumbles out of my mouth, like a flower held between my fingers that drops softly to the floor. Later on, of course, there will be other names, sweeter, more intimate and unshared. But until then, this name, with its worn, unfamiliar petals, this name of yours, will do. Thank you. Thank you. It's a, it's a beautiful poem. Thank you. Thank you. Jatin is a, is, a, is, a po is a writer who, who does not share his writings. He's very intimate about his poems and his poetry he doesn't he's also a very intimate and private person you know um, and I feel very lucky to know him as a as a friend as a person to know to share little stories with him every time I talk to him you know so it's it's always in that moment and that moment is always overpowering the every moment that I spent with him that moment is very it, it, it has become little little moments of poetry in my head, you know, so ev the past, my past with you has picked up little bubbles in my head. Each of them could be little books or, um, or a little story or a little poem or a little art, you know. But ha having said that, uh, Jatin, I think today I would really like you to share your poetry out with everyone here. And I, I picked two. Um, before that, I want to ask you a question. Um, you know, you said you, you say this a lot. I work in my studio. If you don't exhibit, people ask, are you still painting? Um, and you said, I quip that nowadays I'm just cutting grass. You know, so to read That's that right. is funny, to hear that is funny. But and it's evidently funny. But I still want to ask you, why is this so funny? You know, why do people ask this? Knowing it's funny, why do people ask such a question? What, what is going on? You know, why are people... Uh, forced to ask a question like, are you still painting or are you still writing, you know? Uh, uh, you see, uh, if you don't exhibit, if you don't, I, I don't exhibit in group shows, very, very little. And I have one-man shows. You see, painting is one thing, it's like writing a poem and publishing is another discipline altogether. Like was painting and the exhibition. Exhibition meaning cataloging, give a title, framing, photography, catalog, poster. All this is a very boring affair which a gallery does. And you give a commission, you know, like a royalty. Okay, this is one. I have been doing graphics. Graphics meaning not the graphic design, printmaking, which is called etching, lithograph, uh, dry point, serigraph, etc., linocut, woodcut. The word graphic comes from the Latin graphos, which means writing, like photography, light writing. Anyway, so graphic. Sorry, this is my teaching goes into play when I'm explaining graphos. Anyway, so for 50 years, from 1962 till today, I have about 200 portfolios of graphics that I've done, never exhibited. And two of my students, when I shifted my studio three years ago, Sir, why didn't you exhibit your graphic? So even in the art world, people don't know that I've done graphics. For 50 years, this is one. And uh, then writing poems. You also write, you also indulge in poetry? 
as if kisi ka baap ka dhanda hai you know you know so everybody has a right to write cook dance music everything but if you there are a lot of sundry artists come also exhibit there are a lot of is officers bvs are exhibiting in delhi you see everybody has their freedom to do everything in their own house but if you publish a poem if you bring an exhibition of paintings to a public arena that you have to have the scrutiny you have to have the criticism that you uh, 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 you know so we used to say even if you have 200 paintings you say i'm not ready for an exhibition yet are you getting my point these days if somebody has done 10 painting they exhibiting 10 paintings already so we are all in a hurry to go to the marketplace and we are not only our commodity in the market we ourselves in the marketplace this is one if you gone to an event meaning an exhibition or reading or something then it your photograph appears somewhere they call okay yeah, third okay yeah, third page page 3 page three. Page three. Ah, page three. so say oh i saw you in page 3 so i get very angry i say i have also appeared in page 1 and 5 5 in page 10 before so you know i have not seen i don't get all the papers so i haven't seen where i have appeared so you are only appearing in page 3 and you are not exhibiting at all you know so what the question kya tha इंजीनियरिंग इन जर्मनी So this drifting is very beautiful, very important for creativity. Very important. Anyway, sorry, go on. The the question was when somebody asked you, "Are you still painting?" You said, "No, I'm making a house card." Uh-huh. You know. See, the point, ha. Uh-huh. <laughs> the point is what you don't see in your Facebook or in the media. If you don't see that you don't exist, believe me or not, there are a lot of young artists don't even know my work because it's not all the time in the marketplace. You know what I mean? So this one, or somebody comes to interview and say, "Do you have you seen my work?" Oh yeah, I know your work. I say, "Where did you see my work?" Here and there, <laughs> in the internet. So then she says, uh, "You have had thirty-five one-man shows." I say, "Wow, you know so much." I said, "Incidentally, I have had sixty-eight one-man shows." There's a mistake in the website. You know what? Web- oh, yeah, yeah, website. Yeah. <laughs> so things like that. Everybody is so confident. What a yeah. and they've seen the work and everybody says that i know his work you know and we all make comments about each other all the time so uh, we are living it a very superficial flippant you know situation uh, 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 we need rasikas we need samaskanda we need to put our feet in shoes and we travel together you know Lis- uh, listening to music Uh, 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 you know, Abhi Kishori Amankar died. Was a great musician. Do you think that they're not condolence meeting? Has has a five hundred people ran to the music shop and bought Kishori? Because those kind of musicians will not be there anymore. You know what I mean? And so on. I we 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 should have a hunger. Uh, uh, you know, the other thing is uh, let's let's have the audience participation. there is a stupid idea that if you make a presentation the end of it there will be question answer this is a very colonial decadent concept i think the subject is important and we all should peel the onion together so if interrupt and ask thank you thank you jatin so um i would like you to read yeah. two of your poems i picked yeah. two that i'd like you to read one is because you talk about camaraderie and friendship and relationship So the poem Emma Fusan Sedo uh, as a tribute to a great artist a friend to to remember a great artist and to also celebrate your relationship with them so this is one that I picked which I'd like you to read and the other one I'm going to keep it a secret to the end here okay uh, Emma Fusan uh, everybody knows and Maqbul Fida Hussain was tall very handsome lived through you know many periods well traveled 
and uh, and was a friend, although he was much older than me. Uh, Bhulabhai Memorial Institute in Wadden Road, anybody knows Bombay, uh, where, as I mentioned, I had a little studio. So we went and got his uh, colors and canvas, so he had a studio next to mine. And we were talking of tea. When I, uh, he first shifted to Delhi, then I was the second person from Bombay. Then Gaitonde, Nasreen Mahmadi, Tayyab Mehta, there are many artists shifted. And I found places for them. Uh, and we all lived in Nizamuddin East, West and Jangpura, which is a ghetto for about 200 creative community lived there. So Hussein, um, he was a great artist and also a great showman. Or uska style with her. I remember my daughter Nandita was tiny, and he comes home and says, "Chalo chai pite." So the t the tea is being made. He says, "Abhi aara." Then he disappears for two months. You know. <laughs> then he plays this trick many places. Hussein sab artist hai na, unka mood hai to chalenge bhool ge chai ke liye. So that became his signature tune also. Okay. M. F. Hussein, Fida. This was just the other day. We all went together to Nizami for kebab and chai. Taeb, Guy, and Hussein. Can't believe they are all gone. Though I was much younger than them. We were friends. From the early days in Bombay at Bhulabhai, I met Hussein in 59. His brisk walk, restless energy, and towering presence remain till date. Tall man with a long brush like an orchestrator, and beard flowing like a prophet with a mischief at the corner of his eyes. He spilled the beans and harnessed every opportunity like a hawk catches a prey to be in the lime and red light. He walked bare, burning his feet and his bare goddess got the fury and all this and many more. He bought boots and leather jackets at Harrods and left them there. Color, brushes and brand clothes in each city and walked away bare feet. While the tea is brewing, he would suddenly disappear and can't catch him for months. This became his signature tune and this disappearance arty trick was played on many. By and by, his signature became loud and occupied the painting space. He has ridden many horses and churned many pictures. Must say, he lived his life on his own terms. But can't forgive the government, the collectors and the art fraternity who did not fight for his return, can't forgive them at all. And this towering figure of art lived in exile and died in no man's land like Bahadur Shah Zafar. Thank you, Jatin. I don't want to say much about the poem. The poem speaks for itself. But I think the ultimate theme for me today, um, a journey that started with essential art, essential poetry, concludes at a poem doesn't need a reader. So I would like you to conclude today's session reading out a poem doesn't need a reader. You know, a lot of people talk about the craft of everything. The craft of a doctor, a motor mechanic, a poet, writer, musician, artist, architect. Uh, if you are a singer, Surtal Laito Hona Chayena, 
That's a prerequisite. That's not great creativity. That's your inborn talent. If I can draw you, it looks like you is no great work. But to bring in a sense of something else in it, which makes that portrait a different. I don't know why I said that. Anyway, <laughs> poem doesn't need a reader. When you pen a poem, the page has to be stark white and uncreased and preferably a fountain pen and black ink. Alone to write in the garden or the toilet. But sometimes on a newsprint in between a drawing during a tea break. A poem is like peeling or farting. The fountain head is to burst open. A, po a poem permeates and percolates down the throat. A poem doesn't need a reader. Thank you, Jeffrey. That was a bad reading. Do you want to read it again? <laughs> I would like to, like Jeffrey said, let's peel the onion together. So if there are questions, if you'd like to, um, I'd request your, you to keep your questions short and we'd probably take about five questions at the most. I see your hand, so I'm going to come back to you. One, two, yes. The, the microphone here. I mean, have the head fatal or complicated then? Have the head fatal or complicated then? Uh, you know, uh, let's not forget, there's no longer British government. There's Indian government, we. We are a dependent people in a great country. We have all diminished. It's not three academies or many 99% of the wonderful institutions are crumbling down. Uh, we as a society, as a humanity, I mean I saw, I'm uh, telling a friend that somebody is building a, 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 a center literally on the river, uh, uh, Tons. We're not concerned about nature, about animals, about our space, about uh, anything. So what to talk about the three academies? Academy has lived its life. You need a visionary in every institution. If it, you know, in a family, you need a father or brother as a mentor. In a school, in an institution. Now this center is running. She's gradually, you know, developing and growing and you know, evolving because of her. So you need visionary. You need concern. And this government and private divide has been there. I think we deserve the kind of government, etc. I mean, look at what's happening in America, so, you know, like that. Thank you. Mm. Next. So, yeah. one question here. You have the microphone. Mm. Okay. And we're going to yeah. do two questions from this side after. Good evening, Trio. There. Uh, Jatinda, I was really mesmerized when you said that uh, I'm vulnerable yeah. uh, to be an artist. But my question is again, don't you think our generation is again vulnerable in in a different style, in a, in a different fashion, uh, when we are not so exposed to this art and li uh, literature and such kind of environment? Uh, uh, vulnerability, you see, has a danger also. No, as I said, if you go on an aircraft, you're also getting, uh, you know, <coughs> touching people, looking at people, images are getting into your you know, because I, as a visual artist, all the images are getting in and you are getting infections. And, you know, I don't make new friends, to be honest, because many of my old friends have not been meeting enough unless, you know, there's something fantastic in Upanishad. It says, you should not do this, you should not do this, you should not do that, but. So, likewise, it says, sensitive person is he who doesn't do anything. But it says, but. If you take up a project, you must see through till the end. So likewise, if you have some friends, good or bad, somebody has all kinds of mischief, but that's your friend forever in life. But if you make new friends, you have to also remember their birthday, you have to also meet, you have to have a meal with them, you have to buy gifts, you know what I mean? So it's better to have few friends. So, not to meet too many people, not to go to too many places, 
but that is a inbuilt contradiction also. But I'm talking metaphorically about the word. They keep your windows uh, and doors open, you know. So, कोई चोर आएगा तो उसको बंद कर देना. Yeah. Next please. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, good evening, sir. Okay. Uh, I have to give it to some ladies also. <laughs> the gentleman, the gentleman has here, yeah, yeah, and please. then we'll come back to you and you. Okay. Uh, the lady in green. Ah, please. Jatin sir, this is. Please put your hand. This is an honor to me to be in your audience first. I am Dr. Vena Bharti. My question is a simple question: Do the market forces play any role in the life of an artist? Uh, 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 Do the market? I don't, I don't know. I got it. Uh, uh, ask the gallery people. I'm not in the marketplace. I no, am an artist. I'm just asking: Do the market forces affect the artist? Um. Of course, it uh, not only affect; it is affecting and it is affecting in a big way. I, Sunye, I live on the sale of my paintings, but I don't paint for sale. Okay? How much do they do? No, no. A lot of people they go to Kya uh, Bolu? They go to the National Gallery, but not or Lalit Kala Academy to a gallery to see the space. Accordingly, do the large painting which will fit there. Okay. <laughs> there are a lot of people who are writing, uh, taking from the internet, from other uh, manipulating. The painters are doing, poets and writers are doing. You know, it's fantastic. I, uh, they have great talent. Yeah. Thank you. I am not interested in market forces. Thank you. Right. So. Uh, The lady here had her hand up for a while in the front seat uh, in yeah, green. Okay. Yeah. Look at DJ microphone quickly. Hello, sir. I myself am an artist. And first of all, I'm really uh, grateful. I'm thankful to have you in our town. I myself have done my fine arts from Mumbai a uh, long time back. And from past 15 years, I've been working in Dehradun. I've done a lot of my solo exhibitions as well as group shows. and right now i'm educating children in art uh as i was hearing your talk uh, you just mentioned uh, that the sensitivity is lost and uh, if somebody does an exhibition or maybe a piece of work they are uh, in a hurry to exhibit it or maybe uh, to tell the world that they have done so uh, while uh, the people of your uh, era uh, they like you you people have been doing a number of exhibitions and nowadays people are just doing two three and they want to get popular uh, so i just uh, have a question in this uh, fast world when the competition is so high and uh, there uh, i think there are lo loads and loads of artists coming every day uh, what is the right procedure to get popularity okay. or maybe yeah okay okay yeah there are no right and wrong ways number one let me tell you i've never participated in a competition in my life i'm the only one lalit kala has not given me a national award because i've never participated okay so uh, they ye jo artist banna hai na let all of you become artist all of you become rasikas Eh, from today, Saugan Khao, uh, take an oath that all of you will write poems and draw and paint every day. You know those who are teaching, like you parents have little children. My child, what should I? What the book should I give him? He's painting and drawing. I said, give no books. This is a Jatin. Jatin ne kuch idea nahi diya. So I said, just give them paper and pencil and ink and pencil. Let them draw. But. the parents should sit with the children also draw parents also should draw the teacher should also draw don't draw on the blackboard a mango and tell them to draw take them to the garden and sit with the flowers and draw the flowers you know a lot of vulgar things have been done in art education in the west you know one of those drawing books where the lines are done and you give it to the child to fill in colors is a terrible thing for creativity don't give these books just give ordinary paper Some somebody say I am interested in singing. So Ghana go for toilet, but Ghana go bus, but train me. Either or, Ghana go. So when you keep doing it, let me no. This is the end of the story. I'll tell you a very interesting thing. In a um, 
a prince, everybody had to go to the Gurukul to learn about everything, right? So he wanted to uh, learn singing. So he went to the Guru said, uh, Guruji, I want to learn singing. I said, oh, really? Then you learn about uh, Vridangam. The Vridangam teacher said, you want to learn Vridangam, go to the sculptor and so on. Then you learn painting. Then eventually the prince, poor boy, was put in the uh, garden to look after animals and plants and wash clothes for two years. And then one, because he spent time in the nature, he could listen to the ripples of the water and all that, looking after plants and animals. By then he was completely connected to nature. Guruji one winter night went and woke him up at 2 o'clock in the morning, so let's go and bathe in the cold water of the river. And they sat with wet clothes on the rock and said, now you sing. So he was mature. So, everyone should do something, you should take a Buy less clothes, buy a smaller telephone, don't buy microwave, then all this will happen. Thank you, bye-bye. <laughs> so, thank you everyone. Thank you, Jatin. Thank you, Rohintan. Can I just request uh, the speakers to stay on stage for one more minute uh, and Nazia, could I request you to present a memento to Mr. Jatin Das, please? The art center that I'm doing in Bhubaneswar, we don't give bouquet of flowers. Ah, thank you. Wow, come And also Nazia, could you give a memento to Mr. Rohintan Daruwala? Thank you so much. And I shall give the momentum to you, Nasir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.